I've done with my planner since the last video. Um, so just a quick update in case you are watching this video first instead of the others in the series. I am redoing my Kiki K planner. This is the large time planner. This is a black cherry. They no longer sell it on the Kiki K website, but you can find it on eBay. I've actually seen on recent groups where people have found it recently, um, or just get one that you like. One thing I really needed in my planner that I did not have before is a bookmark. And something that could be just really simple. I could snap it out, snap it back in when I needed to, and be done with it. I opened up the Cricut Design Space and really, really went to town on trying to make something that was visually stunning, something that was very unique that you couldn't find anywhere. And then I decided that doing something basic would be best um, for a couple of different reasons. Number one, it was easier. Number two, if something happened, if I made something really kind of extensive and design heavy and something happened to it, I would probably be very upset because it took a lot of time and I wouldn't be able to recoup that. So I'll go ahead and show you what I did. I took some extra paper from one of my dividers, this divider right here. And in the Cricut Design Space, what I did was basically made a rectangle, a rounded rectangle, and I used the whole guides that I'd already made for my dividers to ensure that I would have the proper holes on the side here. And I went ahead and made sure to add an extra space on the top so that when it's sitting inside my binder, I can close it and view it. See, there it is. It could view it on the go. So this is actually nine inches tall, and I forget how wide it is. I think maybe about an inch and a half to two inches wide. So I did the holes, and then I'll show you how I configured everything to get it to look how it looks now. So here is an extra bookmark that I had made at the same time. I cut this using the Cricut Design Space. That way I'd have a backup just in case something happened to it. I knew I wanted to laminate my bookmark, but I didn't have any um, lamination tape or material available um, to use in my Xyron Creative Station. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Creative Station. So I had to improvise, and what I did was remember that I had different Xyron laminating paper. So this is the Xyron 10 Glossy Laminate Sheets. I got this, oh, I got it from Hobby Lobby for $7, and this is really easy. I'll go ahead and read to you everything it says on here. So you get 10 sheets. Um, you don't need a machine, you don't need any heat, it's quick and easy, and it has this really handy grid liner for easy sizing. And it says it's perfect for photos, certificates, art, document protection, paper crafts, and scrapbooks. So I took one sheet of this, and I'll just show you using the leftover material I have. Now, the difference between a sheet like this and using a cartridge in, for example, the Xyron Creative Station um, thing is that this isn't going to double laminate what you're trying to laminate on both sides. And that was something I didn't really take into consideration, so I had to do everything twice. So as you can see on this paper, this is the front side, it's very glossy, that's the laminate side, and on the other side is the grid. So using something like this, what you want to do is very carefully peel the laminate and using the grid that you can see on the other side you want to place your item in there and then smooth the laminate down on top of it cut it out and you have basically a laminated piece of whatever you're trying to laminate. If I were to do it right now, it would only laminate half of it, and I don't know that I have enough for both sides right now. 
Yeah, I don't. Um, that's essentially what I did. The thing that makes it extra special in my planner, after double laminating the bookmark, I went ahead and I had to re-punch the holes with a single hole puncher, which um, requires a little bit of muscle because the laminate is a thicker material. Then taking a normal pair of scissors, what I did was I cut a th single line on the margin of each hole. That way I could just snap it into the binder. Easy peasy, no problem. There it is there. You can't see it because I got paper in there. There's my bookmark there. Um, so that was really easy. If I had made something that was a bit more grand in terms of design, um, I mean, it might have looked really pretty, but this came out okay. And if something happens to this, I probably won't be too upset. Some tips on using this sheet laminate versus using a machine. Um, I actually don't have a hot laminate machine. I, um, I've used one in the past, didn't like it, didn't find it to be very effective. So I'm actually using the 5 inch creative station for um, laminate and stickers when I need to do something, when I have a bigger project. With the machine, you crank roll the material through it and it gives you a very, very smooth, perfect laminated object. You do have to cut it yourself, but because it's pressed between rollers, it gives it a better finish, I think, than what the sheet laminate does. Because for this, you can see there are, I don't know if you can actually see it, there are some minute little bubbles that I did my best to flatten out, but I think are just kind of part and parcel of this type of material. Um, so it's not perfect which I'm okay with because from afar it looks fine. No one's really going to take a look up close at it. And I think for what it is, it came out really great. It was essentially inexpensive to do. It didn't take me a lot of time because I used resources I already had. I already had the template to make the holes where I wanted them to go. I already have the paper. The paper matches my... Um, dividers perfectly. I have a backup if I need. So it just kind of all really, really worked out. If I wanted to, I could stick something to it. Like I could stick a sticky note to it. I don't have one here to show you. Um, and have something nice from that, but it worked out pretty nice. So that's my bookmark. In the video I did about creating my dividers, one thing I mentioned wanting to do was creating was to create a flyleaf for my binder. And I picked a piece of paper specifically uh, that would look beautiful on top of this top divider. However, when I was thinking about the construction of it, I knew I was going to have to cut it on the Cricut. I was going to have to do the holes. Um, and the paper wasn't as thick as this paper is. It was really kind of more gentle. Um, it was, what's the word I'm looking for? Flimsy. And I didn't want to risk making something I liked on, <laughs> I didn't want to risk making something I liked. I didn't want to risk making something, cutting it out on that paper, and then like when I go to take it off of my Cricut mat, having it rip and that being only the piece of paper that I have in that design. So I opted to go in a different direction. Now how this started was I knew that I wanted to create um, folders to go in this section here. And that's going to come in another video because that's something I'm still working on and I have a template in process and I'm working on it. Um, from working on that, what I did was create something new. This is a dashboard that is very pretty. Um, I mean, I love the paper first and foremost. Look how just utterly pretty that is. It was between this paper and something else, and I ended up 
trying a different project with that other paper and it got ruined and I'm very sad about it and that was I think the only sheet I had in that but whatever life goes on um so rather than just having a fly leaf what I decided to do was create a dashboard that had purpose so using the guides I made for the hole punches I created and, and also because I had been working on the folder project I created this dashboard which opens like a folder and closes where the edge of the top just kind of kisses above where the holes go so that when I put it in my book like so I can keep it in there and just open the flap and access whatever is inside there and what I thought would be perfect for inside of this is let me get them out paper. I love using these sticky notes from the dollar shop. I'm always buying them. I have a ridiculous collection of them. I really like them a lot. So I thought I would take some and put them in here. That way I always have sticky notes with me on the go. It's in an attractive container, something that I can keep within my binder. It's not obtrusive and it's in a pretty paper that I don't mind having at the beginning of my book because if you look, it quite matches everything else. It matches the dark cherry color of the planner. It matches the um, light pink inside. It even, you know, matches the gold of the rings and the labels of my dividers. So this I'm really quite happy with how it turned out. Um, and I'm going to work on figuring out how to place the sticky notes inside of here so that I have an on-the-go sticky planner divider dashboard compartment thing. Yeah, let's get to work. <laughs> 